Good morning. Good to talk to you this morning. (laughs) Nice talk to you guys. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, see, I, I was going to say buenos dias porque yo entiendo uh, español solo, uh, no portugués. So I was like, <clears throat> what do I, because uh, I would say that most people, uh, they would call you Rico, correct? You're, you go by Rico? Yeah. But am I saying yo Rico if, if I'm Brazilian or am I, because in Spanish I yo would Rico. say. You're right. Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we're All off right. to a good start guys we're, we're coming up in five seconds uh mike's gonna start this and uh let's let's take this off one second guys it is 7 39 news talk saga 960 raw mike richards along with david bastel and as you know we have jim lawson on the show quite often because we love to talk about our friends at Woodbine. Uh, Right now, I'm not thrilled with how our government has treated Woodbine, to be honest. The uh, record uh, during the pandemic has been spectacular. From the moment uh, they were able to race, um, there were no breakouts. Woodbine did an amazing, an amazing job. And right now, they're still not running. You can play hockey. (laughs) Oh, you can can have a, a Leaf Senators game. But for God's sakes, uh, don't don't be watching uh, Rico da Silva, you know, on a horse because that's very upsetting for people. Apparently, very very contagious. Even though there's no fans, I don't I don't I, I for the life of me, I do not understand this. But here's what I do understand: uh, when you talk about uh, Rico da Silva, you're talking about one of the good guys and uh, one of the guys that is so well known in uh, horse race circles, but especially at Woodbine, uh, and he has loved this uh, country, this city. Uh, and embraced it coming all the way from Brazil. And he was honored, I think it was December the 7th, back 2019, where they had a special day for him, as they should. Pretty special guy joining us here this morning. And we say, good morning, not buenos dias, because that would be wrong. What would I say, Rico? What am I saying in Brazilian? How am I, how am I saying good morning? Bon dia. Bon dia. Bon dia. Bon dia, bon dia Rico da Silva. Thanks so much for joining us here this morning. Mike. Mike, thank you for having me here. It's a privilege to be here with you today. Well, it's a privilege to talk to you, uh, my friend, because when you, and, and, and this is how I was talking to people earlier this morning, Rico, I said, most people, and, and I, myself included, we probably don't really understand the life of the jockey. We see you. We see you win. We see you in the winner's circle. We see you with the owners, we see you on television, and it looks like a, a rock star lifestyle, that how could anything possibly be bad for the jockey who, who has made what we can, because we see lots of money, we assume that everything being a jockey is probably a pretty good life. We don't see the pressure. We don't see the other side. And I think for most people, uh, Rico, we don't understand what it takes to be a jockey. Thank you for thank you for mentioning that. Um, very 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 good very good point. Um, first, to be a jockey is uh, like everybody see the glamour. You know, you smiling, you winning, but behind the scene is totally different. You know, plus um, for you to be very good jobs first you need to be good with yourself because we are dealing with animals and you have to have that connection you have to have that deep deep connection with the horse first is another thing that um, um, you know is is uh make our lifestyle very difficult is the weight yeah. you know we need to fight the weight all the time like i was on di- on the diet a very strict diet I'm one of the lucky guy that, you know, I have the diet. My weight was in control, like in control. Like the last 10 years, I was 112. I never went up. And I stayed 111, 112, you know, eating the same, same thing, like very, very healthy. Uh, I take care of my diet very good. I don't only believe the diet was for my weight, uh, but also for my mind. I, I, I'm a big believer that if you eat, really good like good stuff vegetables fish and eat good you're going to think better also you know 
And uh, I, I used to pay a lot of attention. And I realized that when I start eating better, my thought was better. Going back to the, um, to the pressure, okay? We are riding animals, you know? We don't know, um, like most of the time, we know the horse is training really well. Uh, the horse is going in good shape to the races, but you know, we depend on the horse to perform well also. Right? We are there just to help the animal and make, make things simple and easy for him to go around and win the race. But the pressure is, you know, what about you go there with a favor and your horse is not feeling good, you know? And, uh, and, and sometimes they come up with uh, problems and you have to make a decision, you know? And you're not going to make people happy and you are under pressure every day. You know, it's not only racing, but also training. Because many times I go there, uh, of course, I ride top horses, and on these horses, most of them in good shape. So what about I go train the horse, and I don't feel the horse was right, and I have to tell the trainer. I said, listen, I'm the first one to tell the trainer, I don't feel your horse is on, on, on his best right now. But, then they're going to react to so yeah, what you're yeah. talking about. You know, maybe his left lead was not, didn't give me confidence. And uh, I think it's better you have a look. Most of the 99% when I tell the trainer, they will find a problem. And I'm the one, and you are under that pressure. But I commit with myself very early what I feel about the horse. Uh, I will deliver to the the to the trainer. Is it good news or bad news? I I have that commitment with myself, and then you are under pressure all the time. Yeah, it really seems that way. This book is a massive deep dive into your life, right from uh, basically day one. You get into a lot of challenging um, topics of conversation, but uh, the great part I like about it, Rico, is. You don't hide from anything in it. It, it. It's completely authentic. It's completely you. And one of my first questions when I when I saw that, you know, you were a very, you know, I obviously knew about you before I met you here today, uh, but you were a very popular uh, Brazilian dry, uh, rider. Uh, and, and, and when I think Brazil and the people I know and friends that I know, it, it's always soccer, soccer, soccer. What made you steer your way to horse racing where where it's almost like in in, in canada you you put a stick in a in a boy or a girl's hand and in brazil it's a soccer ball what made you made that decision and how did you come about that <laughs> that decision about soccer was very early because you know every time i go play the soccer instead i kick the ball the ball kicks me so i'm not very good in <laughs> soccer <laughs> you know what make was I have a very strong connection with horses since I was very young, and uh, like I tell in my book, I I when I did my book, same thing as I was telling about the trainers that the feeling I had about the horse, I went, I did the same thing in my book. You know, I try, I I did my very best to tell the story the way it is. Now going back to your question. Um, very early in my life, I have a very strong connection with the horse, you know, because horse mirror love and compassion to you. That's what they mirror, animals, right? And I have very, like that very strong connection. And I saw a race when I was five years old. I remember to these days was a black and white TV. When I saw that just hit inside my heart, I knew what I want to do in my life. And I used to go to school and tell people, I said, one day I'll be traveling the world, I'm going to be a jock. And they thought I was nuts. <laughs> they kicked me from, <laughs> they kicked me out from the conversation, <laughs> you know? <laughs> anyway, and I stick with that dream and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and I'm grateful, you know, horse took me from my town. It's not only from my town, uh, like I say in the book, you know, I went through some, like very tough uh, stuff that happened in my life when I was young, when I was three years old, especially a big trauma. And the horse was able to take me from there and, you know, and travel the world. You know, I've been very blessed, 
Yeah. Well, the, the, some of the things that you talk about, um, which a lot of athletes do later on in different sports, and that is their upbringing, what it was like in their home, what their relationship was like with their mother, their father, the, the, the other uh, brothers and sisters. And you talk about that relationship that was difficult uh, with your father. You, you talk about a, an emotional uh, warfare. And, and I find that in sport, uh, even I see this as a, as a coach of, of high school kids, that sport becomes an escape. It allows you to get away from something that was very, very painful. And I think that connection for you, not only the sport itself, but your relationship that you just talked about with the animals themselves, it sounds like you found an escape from something that was, was, was unpleasant, was difficult for you as a kid in that home. You you hundred and ten percent right. It's like when I was with horses, I was in different world. And then when I escape, like when I finish the race and I go go home and I, when I, you know, the worst company for myself was myself. You know, I was my own, own worst company. That you know the thoughts and, and inside our mind, right? And until I learn how to deal with that and come, you know, overcome that was very difficult. But horses always, when I was racing, I was with the horse, with the horse, and I was in different world. I was a world of love, compassion, beauty, you know, and totally different, uh, different uh, frame of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Riding for Freedom is the name of the book. Uh, Rico, where can they where can they find this book? Uh, just as we get a, a promo here, and we wanna we wanna make sure people find this book online, or or what's the best way of our audience that is listening right now to get a hold of this one? Uh, just go to Amazon.ca or Amazon.com. Uh, if you're in Canada. Uh, go to Amazon.ca or is uh, uh, on or uh, if you're in the states or another country, uh, you can go to Amazon.com. Now, uh, living in uh, in in Toronto now, do you live in in Toronto? Is that have you made you made your home here? Uh, yes, I live. Uh, no, I lived about thirty minutes, thirty five minutes from Toronto. I live in Campbellview. Yes. I love nature. I'm around <laughs> here because, you know, and my job required as a mind coach for athletes now, now I'm on another side helping, you know, the guys uh, on the sport and or executive and, or anyone that have a, a, like a lot of pressure business. Uh, and my, my, my job to help people is, um, uh, you know, settle um, the pressure how to deal with the pressure. And my job is involve a lot of nature. And this is a perfect place for me because I have Croft Lake, I have a Hilton Falls and a lot, a lot of, like I have lots of nice trail around here. And that's where I do the work with my, my people, so, my so clients. Now, what about um, churrasco? Have you found a churrascaria? I mean, where are you getting a barbecue? This must be, this is going to be difficult for you. Rico, you got to find churrasco, good churrasco. <laughs> picanha, you know, picanha is the best, uh, the best beef. Um, anyway, the churrasco is, is in my backyard. Oh. I have a nice, <laughs> yes, very nice best churrasco. <laughs> So you're, you're so you're a performance coach, but are you also are you also studying Taekwondo? Or are you teaching Taekwondo? How does it work? Yes. Also, I have a Taekwondo uh, in. We have a school in Milton, and okay. a school in uh, Oakview. We have two locations uh, called Dragon Taekwondo, and we're going to expand more. You know, it's. My, like everything involved to help the community and Taekwondo is a beautiful thing. I've been training Taekwondo for 15 years. Also helped me a lot on my mental work. You know, any martial arts really help you to be, stay on that, that focus. That is my passion. So you've gone from Rico da Silva to Anderson Silva. Is this what you've done? <laughs> Spider-Man. Yeah, Horse man right. to Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, thank you so much for this morning. It's been <clears throat> a real pleasure, which I knew it would be. Um, you know, these are great stories because for people, uh, as you said, you, you talk to them in business, you talk to 
you know, it's, it's all very relatable, you know, and, and considering you were at the highest stakes of a very pressure filled uh, industry where there was millions of dollars on the line, your story basically says, if, if you think the millions of dollars are going to make you happy, if you think the money is simply going to make you happy, you're here to say that it's, it's, that's not what makes someone happy. You can make all the money you want, but that won't bring you necessarily happiness. And I think that's an important story, uh, Rico. And that's what happened with me. I was making a lot of money, okay? But it means to me more in my heart, helping people, you know, to get on their best, you know, helping the, my clients get on their best means much more for me than I've been writing and make a lot of money. Well, it is a great story. Thank you for this morning. I also look forward to being in your backyard. I, I, I need to have uh, charrasco. Yes, I do. I need to have that beef because there's nothing like it. Uh, charrasco is the best. Picanha. <laughs> well done, medium yes. or? Uh, uh, crudo, uh, rare. Cru rare. Okay. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rico, uh, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to you again. Congratulations on a great book. And uh, we certainly wish you all the best and, and really appreciate your time here this morning. Thank you very much and good luck to everyone. <laughs> that is uh, Rico De Silva. What a, what a treat that was this morning. I knew it would be. And I uh, feel good after that, don't you? It's, uh, it's nice. Absolutely. This, 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 this day and age, I actually go, I feel pretty good right now. <laughs> no.